Hello, Internet. My name is Catherine Barsanistas, and you're watching the Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, my, for the most part, <laughs> a weekly cooking show, where I, Catherine Barsanistas, make a recipe based off of various tabletop role-playing games, such as Dungeons and Dragons, Shadowrun, Pathfinder, and, you know, whatever I happen to feel like making up a recipe for my show. I can pick whatever I want. Anyway, last episode, we made some chicken and apricot sausages based off of the Gallant Knight Games uh, tabletop game, Tiny Taverns. This week, we are going right back into Dungeons and Dragons for Volo's Guide, uh, Volo's Guide to the, um, of the Sword Coast, sing the Singing Sprites Trio of Trumpets. Now, now, this particular dish, the Trio of Trumpets, comes from the uh, tavern, the Singing Sprite, which is located in Secumber, which is kind of uh, West Feyru, uh, kind of the west area of the Sword Coast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the description uh, for that once I can bring that up. Um, it is it is this inn faces the seven stringed harp across a rather muddy meeting of lanes. The sprite is a slate shingled, many gabled, solid looking stone building, which that's a lot of adjectives, I, I know, uh, that is cold and damp in winter and warmer and damp in summer. Its pleasant staff, staff sets the tone for your visit and offers meeting rooms for hire that succumberites use constantly and is a superior feast, uh, has a, a superior feasting board. Um, so, the food at the Sprite is a treat, the dining room never closes, and it serves some dishes that make my mouth water just remembering them. For most of these, the dish called Three Crabs. We are not making that because crabs are hard to get this time of year. Crabs are expensive! Anywho, um, the light side dish usually, get it, uh, usually accompanies everything else in this dining room is a tree of trumpets. This plate of three fried crisp crackers, each as long as a human's hand. Uh, these trumpets are horn-shaped crackers stuffed with melted white cheese, chopped nuts, and fried mushrooms. So that's what we're making today. Uh, this, was, uh, this particular dish was voted on by my Patreon subscribers for the month of August, um, as was last week's recipe. And we're going to be making some wonton cracker cones with these thingies, um, filled with Baby Bella mushrooms, because uh, honestly they taste mostly, uh, Baby Bella are probably the closest thing you're going to get to chanterelle mushrooms, which are mega expensive, or you can really only forage them. Uh, they taste similar, and by adding a little bit of black pepper, it's going to give you that chanterelle forest mushroom taste. Um, Baby Bella mushrooms are also known as, uh, what's it, porcini mushroom? No, no. They're basically tiny little portobello mushrooms. Um, I can't remember the other, cremeni. They're known as cremeni mushrooms. And I know a lot of people don't really like them as much because they can get a bit slimy, but they won't be slimy the way I'm cooking them today. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of people have a tendency to throw the mushrooms in with the fat. You actually want to throw the fat after cooking the mushrooms down, unless they happen to be shiitake mushrooms. Anyway, I am rambling. Uh, with that, we're going to be making a fondue using Swiss cheese and hickory smoked gruyere that off and that is if I remember where the heck I put it we're gonna be crushing up some pistachios to put on top of all that uh, this is a rather uh, it only seems difficult just because of well using things you're probably not used to using uh, the reason why this episode is actually so late this month is because Amazon did not deliver these things so I had to order another package to replace it and then they decided that the best place to put said package is behind my house on the pavement about three feet away from the picnic table that would happen to be under a tarp and it started raining. Gotta love those folks that are really thinking with their heads. So I've chatted on and on about what's going to go into this recipe. We should probably actually start making it, don't you think? So, you are going to need, my friends, well, these. And I'm just going to switch the camera so you can get a better look at, at these things. These are little ice cream cone molds. You can get them in like packs of 18 to 20, um, Amazon or just places. Um, they are super cheap. 
they're super durable, and the reason why we're gonna be using these two is that we're gonna be deep frying these things to make cones. So egg roll wrap, uh, egg roll wrappers. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna need about 10 to 20 of these. It really depends on whether you want to um, use fewer of them and swish them out, or if you just wanna get the whole thing wrapped and fried. In that case, you're gonna need about 20. You're gonna need a pack of 20 egg roll wraps, like these guys, about eight ounces of Swiss cheese, eight ounces of Gruyere, and you know, um, I happen to find hickory smoked Gruyere, which I think is gonna add kind of a nice uh, flavor to it, especially since this is gonna be from a tavern out in the woods. So hickory smoked Gruyere seemed kind of to be the thing. And you're gonna need about, uh, what's it called? Do, 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 do. I wrote this down, a half a cup of crushed pistachios. I have not crushed these yet. That's gonna be part of our prep. You're also gonna need about a cup and a quarter of hard cider. I've got bold rock apple cider right here. That should be my uh, liquid base for my fondue filling for this. And you're gonna need about eight ounce, ounces of cremeni, i.e. baby bella mushrooms. Um, I happen to have a Costco membership and I also used mushrooms earlier this week for another blog post recipe for some uh, risotto based off of the cartoon Craig of the Creek. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, you're also gonna need cornstarch. About two tablespoons of this, guy, this stuff. And canola oil or vegetable oil for frying. I happen to have vegetable oil. It's less expensive and honestly it has a better, um, it has a higher smoke point than canola oil. And also the smell is not nearly as nauseating for me. I mean, I will admit that one of the reasons why I don't like deep frying all that much is that it makes my entire house smells like, smell like canola oil. It's not the best smell in the world. Um, unless you have a deep fryer, I really wouldn't recommend doing deep frying all that often, but this is pretty simple to do. In fact, the cones you can make uh, about up to three days prior to making the font filling. So if you don't, uh, if you have a game night coming up and one night while you're making dinner, you just want to go ahead and deep fry these cones, get them in the fridge, get them ready to go. I actually highly recommend that. So, right. So what I'm going to be needing to do first is go to my stovetop and get some oil heating because it's going to take a good minute to get that heated up to about 350 degrees. So you're going to need about two inches of oil. So that's about an inch. I'm going to do about two inches there. What is that? An inch. That looks about an inch. A little bit more. There we go, two inches of oil. And I'm just gonna set that over medium heat and keep an eye on that thermometer. You see I have a uh, frying slash candy thermometer right here. You're gonna want it to get to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I really recommend uh, using one of these things rather than uh, one of those probe thermometers, uh, mostly because that way you don't have, like, especially if it's a little flimsy, it doesn't accidentally flip out of the pot and then burn you. Uh, I speak, unfortunately, from experience. Anyway, we're gonna wait for that to do its thing. Next up, we are gonna be prepping our other ingredients, which is gonna be our cheese, as well as our mushrooms. So I'm just gonna grab some bowls here. And get these things open. So, well, yes, you can spend quite a bit of time using a cheese grater. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use my food processor because most standard food processors do include a cheese grating attachment, which is going to save you quite a bit of time as well as your fingertips. The reason why we are grating our cheese is that as we are waiting for the cheese to melt, it, you're really trying to get as smooth as possible. Um, I 
kind of need to be adding a little bit at the time. That's why shredding it is important. Um, you could buy shredded cheese, but for one, it's more expensive. And for two, um, you don't really get cool flavors of shredded cheese all that much. For example, you're not going to get shredded Gruyere. You're just not. So, right. I'm just going to switch over my stove cam over to my food processor real quick. Get this buddy out. So yeah, it looks a little bit like this if you've never used it before. And it comes with a cool little stand like this. So you're just gonna need to get that in there, attach it, and Chances are your food processor will not allow you to have that completely open. So unfortunately I am going to have to cut it a bit uh, before slicing as you can see. So I'm just going to shred that up, get the other part. I've got the Swiss shredded up. It's now time to add my smoked rare. Ah, cheese dust, don't breathe this. Okay, and as you can see, shredded cheese. Lots and lots of shredded cheese. So, we are going to be needing about two tablespoons of cornstarch in our cheese. So, tablespoon. Cornstarch. One and two. So we're just going to use our spoon to kind of toss and coat our cheese with our cornstarch. All right, I'm just gonna take a quick look at our thermometer to see where we are on heating up the oil. Uh, we are currently at uh, 200 and um, degrees. So we still have a bit of time, which is good because I've got stuff to do, like slicing up the mushrooms. So I want these to be small enough to cook down and fit inside of our cones. That's the thing, mushrooms do tend to cook down quite a bit and shrink, but these cones do have a rather small opening, like we're talking about uh, a little over an inch uh, right there, about an inch, inch and a half. So. We want to make sure that these are going to be small enough before they cook. So we're talking about half inch pieces here. And you're going to want about eight ounces of, um, well, we'll see about how we do with four. But as you see, I'm already slicing these about a half an inch thick and then cutting the pieces. So they are kind of a half inch dice. About this looks like it's about a cup to cup and a quarter of a uh, quarter of mushrooms. That's probably fine, but what the heck, I'm going to aim for about eight ounces here. So we're looking at probably about two cups of mushrooms. If it's too much, oh no, I'll have a tasty cheesy base to make dinner from. So we've got our egg roll wrappers, you're going to need about 20 of them. You're gonna need about 20 of these cones here. And you're gonna need a beaten egg, which I totally forgot to get. So let me get on that real quick. As well as a plate to put these things on. All right. 
And yes, I know those are eggless vegan egg roll wraps. It's because that's the only egg roll wraps I can get at uh, Kroger and Publix. What was I doing? Oh no, it's Publix. Yes, um, eggs. I need an egg. I'm gonna be a hypocrite by using a vegan egg roll wrap with an egg. I mean, I'm filling it with cheese. I mean, I'm, it's pretty hypocritical to begin with. Okay. Bam. There we go. Egg. How are we doing on that heat? It's going down. It still needs to go down. Cool. And just beat the crap out of it with a fork. Until it is mostly smooth. So I've got that. And I also need a pastry brush. It's still too hot. Okay. All right. So I've got an egg roll wrapper here and I've got a cone. So you're going to want to put said cone kind of diagonally like this in the center of your egg roll wrapper. Then we're just going to fold the corner over the bottom and then fold it over like so and wrap it up like so. And I'm just gonna put this seam side down on the plate right now. I'm gonna brush it with some beaten egg in a little bit but I'm just gonna wait until we get to, what's it called? I'm wait till it's actually the correct temperature for frying. I'm just gonna check my oil real quick. All right, we are actually exactly at 350 degrees. So I'm just gonna get the heat back on here on very low and do a quick brush on these guys. To seal up these edges. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna whew, switch cameras here. Yep. So we're still looking at it. There we go. All right. not touch the hot oil and we're just gonna let those guys fry until they are golden brown which that has not happened yet so I'm just gonna pull a plate out real quick and line it with some paper towels to let that drain on once they're done Oof. 
actually probably better doing two at a time. Yeah, they'll be fine. Right. I'm just going to let the heat come back up to temp here. Come on. There we go. Well, I get these others covered. Very careful how you put these guys in. Come on. I think we are almost done on some of these. Just make sure to empty the oil out of them out the front before removing them completely, like so. And that guy's done. That's good enough. Okay. Well, we are done deep frying, so I'm just going to get that off the heat to cool down. Switch it with the pan I'm going to be making our fondue filling with. And I'm going to be switching back to our prep space because there is one bit of prep I forgot to do. And you know, that's fine because I also need some time for these cones to cool down enough to uh, break down and remove the metal centers. So it all works out anyway. So I'll just get that out of the way. And get cracking on our pistachios. So, ladies and jelly spoons, you're gonna need about a half a cup of crushed pistachios. So I'm just going to get out something that you might recognize. And by might, I mean you might be embarrassed to recognize. And that is a slap chop. Because, what am I kidding? These things are messy. We're not going to get a slap chop out. We're going to do things the noisy way. Well, slightly less noisy way and definitely less messy way. Once I can find where I put this particular tool. I know you're in here. Ah, here we are. Exhibit one, kitchen mallet. Exhibit two, Ziploc bag. dish for shells, and measuring cup for nuts. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna start out with that much. And then we're gonna get kind of boring. Oh, by the way, if you happen to have a 
pistachio like that. You can't get it open with your fingernails. Use another pistachio shell and turn it like a key. There we go. That didn't work out as well as I was hoping. Hold on. Just gonna wedge that in there. Boop. Shell ho. There we go. All right, so we've got pistachios. Ziploc bag. Push the air out as much as you can. Seal it up. And then. Smash it up. You know have crushed pistachios. So now that we've done the smashing of the things and the tossing of the pistachios, well, pistachio shells, oh, I need to remove the shells from these crackers and try to find the cool ones. Yeah, I know I'm gonna have to break off the tops of them, but it's so I can get the little metal cone out from inside of it. Just move to the next one until I can get that one out. There we go. Okay, looks like the last ones are just being stubborn as us. Ha, ah, there we go. If I twist it, yep, there it goes. So if it's being a butt, just twist it. There we go. Crap, I forgot to put the, uh, I forgot to put it on. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, we have um, our mushrooms going on a pan that we've been preheating for about a minute and a half. Um, well, minute and a half, two minutes. Um, as you can see, the moisture is releasing as it's cooking. So um, you don't necessarily need to have any fat added to it, especially since we're going to be adding a crap ton of cheese in just a bit. Um, what was I doing? Uh, 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 uh. Moisture cooks away. So we're just we're just waiting for it really. Um, a lot of times when you have mushrooms and they taste too slimy, it's because they didn't cook out most of the moisture before browning it. This thing is mushrooms are kind of little savory sponges. And you can see how much that's cooking down now that it's been added. Now it's still sizzling, so I'm still gonna let it do its thing before I add anything else. I just want this as cooked down most of the moisture out as possible, as well as get a little bit of browning. And um, yeah, so it tastes good. Uh, as you saw, I added about a pinch or two of kosher salt to that. That should season it nicely. We also have quite a bit of salt uh, content in our cheese, but if need be, we can also add a little bit more to adjust for flavors, because that's that's the thing with cooking. You do have to taste your food when it's, of course, safe to do uh, safe to do so. Don't go tasting your raw proteins, um, well, raw animal proteins and all that. Okay. All right. We have the majority of the moisture cooked off here, so. Now we got that, I'm going to pour in my cup and a half of hard cider. And I need to get that to a simmer. That is just carbonation right now. So it's starting to simmer a little bit. But I want it to be simmering a wee bit more. Kind of more of a low boil, I think. 
Actually, no, I think that's a good, good bubble we've got going. So I'm just going to set it down to kind of a medium. Well, let's go down to low. Okay, so here is where it's going to seem a little weird because it's going to take a while. It might, it might not. It depends on how hot your, your uh, mixture is. But we are definitely simmering. So now I'm just going to add a handful of cheese and I'm going to start stirring. Okay, so I need to add some salt to that. So I'm just going to add some more salt and continue to stir. So now, now that's all smooth, I just need to add about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. About a quarter of a teaspoon of ground coriander. And a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cumin. need to stir that in thoroughly and reduce the heat to low. And that is looking pretty darn perfect. So, Gonna remove that from heat. Find me a trivet. And switch back to our prep cam. I have all of that awaiting. You know what? I actually am going to wait for those to cool down before I do any serving. Because for one, melted cheese is kind of like napalm. While delicious, it's also very hot. Can burn to your mouth and also cling to stuff. So, just going to pour stuff into a cone and put it back. And repeat. Just good. Because this means I can wait until tomorrow to take pictures of this. Because I am tired. So. Right, and I should ooh, keep that upright. Should add some pistachios to the top while it's still melty. That way it sinks in. And stays in place. more.
my friends, is a whole bouquet of trumpet crackers of the Singing Sprites Trio of Trumpets. And now that that's all done, I'm going to try one. I think this guy might have been the messiest, yeah. Let's replace them there. All right. Well, that's a good looking cracker, but it is the messiest. So. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Mm. kind of exploded on me. There you go. But not gonna lie, that's delicious. Mm. <laughs> mm. I can finish this before I can continue to talk. Otherwise it's Falling all over me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'd call that a success. Hmm. Normally, you could serve about three of these to each person. So this batch makes about 18. So party of six or a party of five, including a DM. Honestly, these things are so rich that you could probably get away serving only two a person. So that should give you about nine plates total. But I don't know. <laughs> I would like to thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Munchies and Minis. Uh, I should be streaming again on this upcoming Monday, and that a promise because I have the uh, recipe written out. I just need to buy the ingredients and I don't need anything weird or special for that. We're going to be making uh, hot bites from the Happy Hippo Hippo Hippocampus uh, Tavern from D&D's uh, Volo Volo's Guide to the Sword Coast. It's going to be some um, wine soaked kind of, I want to say French toast with broiled leeks and cheese on top. It should be really tasty. And uh, then I'm going to be at Dragon Con next weekend, so um, I think that's all I can really think of. Um, <laughs> Strike Red Kite says, resounding trumpeting success. Yes, it was. Holy crap, that was delicious. Um, so yeah, I uh, should have some new content coming up. If you are one of my Patreon subscribers, keep an eye out uh, this uh, upcoming, day, uh, upcoming few days for um, the remaining recipe cards for this month. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put these in the fridge and take photos of them tomorrow because I'm exhausted. Um, my name is Catherine Barsanistas. You've been watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis. And as always, stay safe, stay sane, stay you. Have a great night.